Thanks for staying with us. Right now, we're looking at the fact that INEX faces protests over election results in Edo, Ondo, and River State. And then uh, we know that the political tensions are rising in Nigeria with protests erupting in Edo, Ondo, and River States over concerns about election integrity. In Edo, People's Democratic Party, PDP supporters protested outside the INEC office demanding a reversal of election results they claimed were rigged. They called on INEC to ensure a fair process. On the other hand, the Ondo state youth groups are protesting ahead of the 2024 gubernatorial elections, demanding the removal of the resident electoral commissioner, Rec, whom they accuse of bias. Finally, in River State, INEC faces accusation of sharing the voters' register with the state electoral commission, which it denies amid growing concerns about the fairness of local government elections. The mounting protests and accusations across these three states highlight growing concerns over INEC's ability to maintain electoral integrity in the run-up to both local and gubernatorial elections. With public trust at stake, the Commission faces significant pressure to address the demands of protesters and opposition figures while reassuring the electorate of its neutrality and commitment to democracy. Our guest this morning, who will bring some wisdom to this, is Wisdom Chap Jumbo, Public Affairs Analyst. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Nice to join you again. Mm. INEC, protests here and there. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to think about the political class and the opposition and all that because mm -hmm. in any state that it favors a particular political party, mm -hmm. INEC is a saint. <laughs> and every other person, INEC is a devil. Mm, but you mm. are an individual. Uh, maybe you belong to a political party. But as anal an analyst right now, how would you rate INEC's performance in all elections? Uh, thank you so much. I, I think INEC, um, they have an issue with public trust. You know, and uh, this issue continues to grow, especially from the 2023 general elections. Mm. Um, if you were on ground, if you were in the polling booths and followed the, 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 the result to collision centers and all, you will agree that there's an issue of public trust. And, and, and I don't think INEC has, you know, addressed it well enough since the 2023 general election. So that issue is still there and um, has not been able, they have not been able to, you know, probably handle it in the way and manner they should. Uh, so, which is probably spilling into some of the off-cycle elections mm -hmm. and all, all that we'll, we'll have. But there's still more responsibility of them. Uh, as an institution, they ought to be independent, you know, and, and they need to at all times uphold that independence. Why are you saying ought important. to be? Are they not? Mm. <laughs> okay, I mean, they, they ought to be means that they should know that it is there. <laughs> <laughs> so, they should be independent in, in all their dealings. But uh, we've not seen them uphold it well enough. Uh, so reason why all these concerns are coming like for example undo now uh, they are saying the wreck in undo in undo is they see the the wreck you know uh, uh, familiarize a lot with um, uh, politicians reason why the youths are protesting you know so that kind of issue now INEC um, um, needs to come out boldly to address it if you see any legitimate concerns there you need to speak to it and take action if you have looked into it and all of that, you need to also make that public so that the, there can be confidence in that election as it's going. Yeah, but do you think well, there is something INEC can do? Because, yes, I know that mm. they are afraid that they, the REC is fraternizing with, with the governor and all that, but mm. can you isolate a REC from what happens in the state? Because the governor will have to put his foot down for a lot of things to happen, security-wise, mm -hmm. uh, logistic-wise, and everything else. Mm. So can INEC really be that independent that they will not even talk to the governor? Talk to the governor, but um, let your dealings with all political... The governor is a candidate mm -hmm. in that election in Ondo State. Mm -hmm. So let your dealings with the governor or any other politician be a public thing that we don't have to look at you with a second eye. Uh, in what you're doing. So that is where the problem is coming from. Do it, but do it. Uh, I mean, there are guidelines INEC in the resident electoral commissions need to follow. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a way, a pattern, you know, by the law, you need to behave when there's an election around uh, electoral officers, I mean, a, a, around candidates and all of that. Can you maintain that process? most especially when you're dealing with the candidates. If the governor wasn't the candidate, maybe we can say, yes, maybe you're going to engage on some issues. The governor is a candidate. Whatever dealings you are doing with him, let it be in public eye so that everybody knows you are not picking sides in any way. I think that's the way they can start. 
Anyway, even though we know that uh, you don't even have to meet with the governor. You don't state even have to. Before, you don't. <laughs> before things you can don't. go under the, the bridge. The governor has no role to play in whatever you are doing. Um, INEC, your rec at the state, you deal with your HQ in Abuja and um, all the things you need, security agencies, the laws are there for you to follow. I don't think you have anything to talk to the governor but about. But we expected that. 2023, okay, let's say, uh, well, we're still trying to understand what the mm. electoral law was mm. and uh, how... Uh, people were, were trying to exploit the loopholes and mm -hmm. do what they needed to do. But we expected that in the off-cycle elections, INEC should perform better. Mm -hmm. Do you think they have improved or they have given gone worse? <sighs> That's a very hard question uh, because we've had some off-cycle elections now. And when I look at how INEC has performed, um, I'm not sure we'll look at INEC differently until we address the issues from the 2023 general elections. Uh, until we do that, I'm not sure any Nigerian uh, will still look at INEC with any confidence in any way. So that is where the problem is, especially with how the, the, the whole cases went up to the Supreme Court for the presidential elections, uh, with INEC's role in all of that. We, we, we are still looking, no, no confidence, I don't think there's so much confidence in INEC uh, when it comes to uh, election matters in a way. I, I think I, I, I will have to be honest about that. Yeah, some people are proposing electoral reforms, like mm. uh, Atiku was talking about electoral reforms and, and also talking about rotational presidency and mm. all that. We're not talking about rotational presidency is a matter mm. for another day, but mm. what kind of reforms should enter into the electoral law again that are not there? Hmm. Because the ones that seem to be there, it's the mm. implementation that is a problem. So how can mm. we make it stronger? I think what we can make stronger uh, at the top of my head now, looking at what happened with general election last year, is uh, we have to strengthen the law in the area of, you know, how the IRF works mm. and how we collate the vote. You know, that was a big dispute uh, during the 23 general elections to say that, oh, uh, we don't have to take the numbers from IREC. We can just take what is coming from the RECs you know, from the states, you know. Mm. So that whole, how we are using technology to, you know, better the election, mm. that whole bit of it, I think we still need some reforms around it to strengthen it. Mind you, we achieved some success, by the way, from 2015 and 2019 elections with 2023 election in the fact that we now see the numbers, the actual numbers, you know, in some states that, especially in the north that we used to hear, oh, there are, <laughs> are 5 million voters there or 10 million voters there. You can see the actual numbers are coming now because the beavers, you know, has helped us, you know, to, to streamline that. But there are still But actual loopholes. numbers, um, in a do state, for instance, mm. the election just held, mm. and we've seen, at least on social media, we don't, mm. I, I wasn't there, but mm. we've seen where... Uh, the number of people who voted mm. exceeds the number of people who were accredited on so, that day. Yeah, so in that, in that area now is where we need to strengthen the law and strengthen the consequences, you know, for people manipulating those, you know, resource sheets. That's where we're having an issue. I think uh, at, at Tana Center for, for, for Governance or something, they had put out, you know, a detailed forensic report on some of the uh, elections that are held after the general election, like mm -hmm. Bayelsa, you know, an emo, you know, and look at. So some of their recommendations, they also will really be helpful uh, to the National Assembly in, in some of those uh, uh, reforms. Because look... Do they listen? Yes, I mean, I hope they listen because... See, because the main we issue we see is you manipulate the resource sheet, you know the... You see the numbers clearly, we can see they have been manipulated and no consequences, you know, on those, uh, 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 what they call them, from the polling units, you know, that sign on the resource sheet. If there are consequences, who will uh, carry out these consequences? Oh, that's why that's where the law comes in. Yeah, let, so let, let us strengthen the law. That's some of the reforms that we need to add, you know, to the uh, electoral act of 2022. Yeah, but the law says this, and you go to the court and they tell you technicalities and all mm. that. So who will be at the at the fore fighting this? Will it mm. be the judiciary, which everybody th is thinking is compromised? Mm. Will it be the uh, politicians themselves mm. that these things favor? Will it be the police that are also compromised and all that? And who will fight it? See, we have had uh, how many elections now? We know where the technicalities are. We know where the politicians explored those technicalities. By we, you mean who? Uh, the ordinary uh, Nigeria. Yes, we all know. The, the, the National Assembly, they also know. They are all the politicians there. Everybody they, knows. Yeah, they know. So this is where also the civil society need to come in. You are part of, you observe the election. You saw, for example, vote buying. The INEC will tell you, oh, if there's somebody uh, paying for a vote there, it's not our responsibility. Security agencies are there to do their job. 
Well, we need to spell some of this out in that electoral act, I mean, the reforms we are going to put out. So in all of this, what it does at the end of the day is it strengthens the process more. And we have just two years to do this before the next election comes in 2027. So all of this, we know where the loopholes are. So let's begin that process. And I hope they start it very soon after the remaining off-cycle elections so that we can get to work. Civil society organizations, mm -hmm. you said. Yes, civil society, yes. <laughs> well, I'm asking you is that yeah. anything that happens, mm -hmm. you will find a civil society organization, mm -hmm. some of them you've never heard their names, yes. having press conferences mm -hmm. and saying one or two things mm -hmm. in support of whoever should even be in jail. For instance, mm -hmm. when Yahya Bello started his um, his uh, disappearing act, there were so <laughs> many civil society organizations mm -hmm. that came and said he's being witch hunted. Uh, so, how do we even identify the mm. civil society organization speaking for Nigerians? Because a lot of them, not all, I know, a mm. lot of them seem to have been bought. We know the credible ones in the civil society organizations. We know them. The ones that play film tricks yeah, every, every time, we know them. But this is where Nigerians need to be honest. Do we want a change? Or do we want to continue the way we are? If we want to continue the way things are, let's continue playing film tricks. Change as defined by who? Change as defined by us that we know because, what the change should be. end bad governance, mm. and then there is, there is don't end bad governance, protest. <laughs> there were two. There, were two. there was a protest <laughs> to end bad governance. There was another protest you know, in Nigeria, to end bad You know, in Nigeria, there are, like I said, there are many film tricks that play. Even, even and, 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 it's because, and it's because the, the politicians explore the poverty in the land. You know, and, and money seems to, you know, make people dance to certain tunes, unfortunately. True. Yeah, so this is where the issues are. But the reforms, uh, are, are, we, we must have them, and then we know where these issues are. And I think, and I hope that the National Assembly addresses this soon, and we'll be part of that conversation. Which means the office of the citizen is the most important office. Very we most important. we are not using to... We are not. Uh, oh, dear. We are not. It's serious. <laughs> now let's zero in on River State. Yes. Saturday is election. Will it hold? Mm. Oh, River State is an unfortunate situation. Uh, there is a, a mandatory injunction from the River State High Court uh, mandating RISEC to hold an election. That RISEC is a River State yeah. uh, Electoral Commission to hold the election. Uh, there's again another judgment uh, from the Federal High Court telling RISEC that, look, you didn't follow some of the processes mm -hmm. or guidelines to these elections. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are mandating INEC not to give you the voters register to hold the election. Uh, and, and whatever happens on the October 5th, I mean, uh, um, it, it's not known to law. So the problem now is how do we respect um, uh, judicial judgments? You know, how do we respect the judiciary uh, and judgment that come from court? That is where we are now. The governor is insisting to hold that election regardless of, of whatever it is. They are hinging on the mandatory injunction they got from the River State High Court. But if you look at that judgment, that uh, injunction or the order from the River State High Court, it never told RISEC to hold an election breaking or disregarding any guideline uh, that should have been uh, completed uh, uh, in process to leading to that election. It is mandatory to hold an election, but he also said you should follow the needed right. guidelines. So what are the guidelines that were not followed? For example, uh, if I could just pull up something really to read for you, and I want to read it word for word so that this is straight from the Federal High Court judgment, uh, so that you know what the issues really are. Uh, number one now, just a minute, yes, this is it. So INEC had not followed 90, say you are supposed to manage updating the updated register. Uh, that should be used for the election, you are supposed to review it with political parties 90 days before that election. That wasn't done. And the Federal High Court stated that clearly, you know, in its judgment. So did you follow those process? They also have the River State electoral uh, 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 law. Did you follow all the needed process, which was spelled out, you know, in the judgment from the Federal High Court? So, rather than us following emotions, we need to sit down. Is the Federal High Court or this uh, 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 judgment that has come, did we you know, miss any point? Can we boldly tell reverse people we didn't miss any point? That has not been done. Rather, you are saying you didn't see it. So, what is happening in River State is the governor has insisted he's going to go on with the election. 
they are hinting on the Supreme Court judgment um, that was won to say, look, um, um, all, look all states should hold local government elections. I agree with you. When this judgment first came out in July, you disregarded it, you went on with your caretaker committee, regardless. Now you are hinting on it again to hold the local government election. No issues. But have you followed the guidelines? That's what we're saying here. That's the issue. If the guidelines have not been followed, can we trace our step back? Because even the judgment they are hinting on from the Federal High Court said, hold the election of fifth or any other date that you will publish. So it didn't even force you to hold the election on the fifth. It just said you must hold an election. Well, <laughs> lawyers can always find a way to go around that. Yes. I, I, I don't know. My problem is these conflicting judgments that mm. come from courts here these and there. These judgments are not conflicting. This particular one are not conflicting in any way. First of all, yes. uh, what's the difference between um, the two high courts? Is it mm. because one is called state and the other one is called federal? Because I thought it's from high court, mm. then you're going to the Court of Appeal, you're going mm. to the Supreme Court and all that. Yeah, the, I mean, they are courts of coordinate jurisdiction. That's the River State High Court and the Federal High Court in Abuja. Mm -hmm. They are courts of coordinate jurisdiction. But let's look at what has come out from the both of them. One has given an order to say, look, you must hold an election for the local government in the state. And in holding the election, you should follow the needed guidelines. Let me read what he said to you. In, in order six of that federal high court, um, uh, state high court you know, order, he said that an order of mandatory injunction be and is held by issued compelling the second and third defendant um, um, by themselves or by their agent, you know. Okay, now I'm reading number six now, sorry that it is further ordered that a mandatory injunction be and is issued compelling the first defendant, which is RISEC, to conduct election in local government in River State on the 5th day of October or any other date fixed by the first defendant in accordance with its electoral guidelines in order to comply with the aforesaid judgment of the Supreme Court. So you can see that is order six. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they may not be conflicted. Uh, we have run out of time anyway. Uh, they may not be conflicted. But yes. I hate a situation where uh, one court gives you an mm. order and mm. you're going to the, another court of the same level, mm. uh, maybe because you have more, because mm. you're running to the federal high court, which mm -hmm. is in Abuja, where mm -hmm. WIKE is, for instance, <laughs> to get an injunction and all that. And what, that's the reason we're having mm. all this fight. But let's not make right? this about WIKE, really. You can approach any court of the land. Yes. And, 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 just, and, and, and just to say, the Federal High Court you know, uh, 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 process was first initiated even before they won the River State High they Court. They should have got to, to the Court of Appeal or something. Yes, yeah, so that's after what, you get, that's what I think. Yes, after you get a judgment from the Federal High Court, if you don't like it, you can appeal it to the, to the Appeal Court. And that's a higher court that can, you know... <laughs> <laughs> this is how much we can go today. Uh, I'd like to thank mm. you for coming. But yes. this is a developing story. Let's mm. see whether it will yes. hold. We, 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 we are following it. Yes. But the judgment was clear to RISEC. And INEC has come out boldly to say, we have com complying with that judgment of the Federal High Court. We have not released the voters register to so RISEC. I just don't want a situation <laughs> where uh, mm. the same kind of person will be met. Mm. because another judgment will favor you, even though it mm. is the right one. Mm. You should have gone to a higher court rather yes. than saying, okay, I have links here, because that's mm. a conspiracy theory. I have mm. links here. Let me go here and get mm. my judgment. You go mm. to another one and all mm -hmm. that. It shouldn't work that way. Mm. Go so, to a higher court. So this message you're just saying now is for the governor. For yeah. everybody. For all of them. So when you see that there's a case in the federal high court, why did you go to the state high court for another for another injunction, the same another thing. judgment. Everybody so, so this is it. Yes. <laughs> so whether it's the governor of the, mm. or the APC mm -hmm. or anything, mm. go to a higher court if you are not comfortable mm. or let this one play out. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. For Thank you so much. We've uh, run, yes. run out of time. Yes. Uh, we've been talking with uh, Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst, looking at the uh, at INEC and what is happening in the off-cycle elections. In fact, starting from 2023 elections, uh, we're going to take a very short break and return with our second guest. Stay with us.